Today I will tell you why we use ultra high vacuum technology in some of our experiments. This is a good question because why would anyone invest so much effort into such a machine if not necessary? One spectroscopic technique that we use is photoelectron spectroscopy. With this method we are able to measure the occupied and the unoccupied electronic band structure of our samples. To do this we use laser light. The light particles, the photons, are absorbed by electrons in the material, which are then kicked out of the sample. We say the electrons are photoemitted, meaning emitted by light. When they leave the sample, they have a certain velocity v. We measure this velocity to determine the electron energy and count the number of emitted electrons with a photoelectron spectrometer, in our case a hemispherical analyzer. As we resolve the intensity of photoelectrons as a function of energy and emission angle, this technique is called angle-resolved photoelectron spectroscopy. Now the problem is, if we do this, in air, that the electron will bump into molecules on its way to the detector. Obviously, such collisions will alter the velocity and direction of the electron and all relevant information will be lost. There are more molecules in air than one would think. The mean free path is below 100 nanometers, or 0.1 micrometer, much shorter than the distance to the detector, which is roughly a meter. The solution is, we need to get rid of all these molecules, create a vacuum, actually an ultra-high vacuum. In our experiments, we reduce the pressure to 10 to the minus 10 millibar, which corresponds to a mean free path of photo emitted electrons larger than 1000 kilometers. To do so, we must surround our experiment with an ultra high vacuum or UHV chamber that is able to withstand the large pressure difference compared to ambient pressure. And then, we use a vacuum pump to get rid of the air inside. Actually, we use several pumps. Many pumps. And finally, we reach pressures that are lower than the millionth part of a millionth of atmospheric pressure. Inside this chamber, there's basically nothing. Well, actually, there are many instruments in the chamber, but I will introduce these another time. What's important today is that our sample is inside the vacuum. And this sample can be moved down through this gate valve into the lower part of our vacuum chamber, facing the photoelectron spectrometer. When we now hit the sample with laser light, we can eject electrons, which then travel all the way through the spectrometer to the detector without any collision with molecules. So, ultra-high vacuum enables photoelectron spectroscopy. <laughs>